Welcome to the module on HRM, Human Resource Management. One of the most important modules of the syllabus on advanced bank management. At the same time, I may say that it's one of the easiest of all the four modules. Easiest in the sense, it talks about our day-to-day -day life, whether in office, whether in home, or in any, even in the marketplace. So the subject is not at all difficult. Probably it's one of the easiest subjects. Still, it has created all the problems down the centuries. So friends, don't learn this particular subject merely from the angle of passing the examination. That of course is important. Already you have got the courseware, you already gone through the year learning, and you already undergone so many training in your own banks and other organizations. So this session will be taken in a larger perspective so that it helps you in passing the examination on the one side, but thereafter in conducting yourself effectively at office, home, and other places. So with that, let's enter this particular module. And this quotation may be familiar to all of you. It's nothing new. This has come from the millennia back. Do unto others what you want others do unto you. Do to others as you want others do something to you. If you keep this particular small perspective in mind, then our life becomes very, very easy and comfortable. We want to be happy. We want to be successful, we want to be loved, we want to be liked, we want to be encouraged, we want to be recognized. The same feelings are there with each and every human being on this particular earth, even today and also down the centuries. So this particular quote could be, could be cited as the, uh, the underlining factor in regard to human resource management. Do unto others what you want others do unto you. Today we have got this particular usage called empathy. You empathize with others. This is another cardinal principle of HRM. That whatever you do, you should empathize with the opposite party. The question to be asked is, are we able to empathize? Have we been able to empathize in our life with others? And if not, how to develop this art of empathy? Because in all management training in regard to HRM, in regard to any subject relating to human relations, they emphasize on this particular word called empathy. So if at all, if we have imbibed this particular quote in our mind, I'm sure HRM will become very, very easy for all to follow. With this background, let me give a few leaders who have put the HRM into practice. And even today, after gaps of hundreds of years and decades even, we remember them with fondness. One, one name which comes before us is Abraham Lincoln. Second one is the Sam Maneksha, who was the field, field marshal of India. R.K. Talwar former chairman of State Bank of India, J.R.D. Tata, the chairman of the Tata Group, and of course, Nelson Mandela. Only to name few persons. Now let, let's take the case of, because this is related to the subject of HRM in a larger perspective, because when you look at the subject, you only see some fundamentals and you know, you, 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 you want to only see certain points which, which will help you to pass the examination. But it is much more than that. Today it is passing the examination, and thereafter you will be entering into larger field. Who knows, a day may come, you will be managing your own bank, and we don't know about the future. Some of you may even uh, be part of some government organization, or even the government itself. So there is a need to understand and imbibe why these people were remembered even today, after such a lapse of time. So I'll spend a few minutes on 
Abraham Lincoln. I think that that will uh, that will uh, stress on the importance of the subject without any iota of doubt. Abraham Lincoln, while overseeing the civil war in America, we understand that he has been adopting a stance, a stand that we should not be critical with the people who are fighting the war. And it has been said, after the death of Abraham Lincoln, they saw so many letters, unposted letters, which were actually criticizing the action of the people in the war front. So Abraham Lincoln believed that if we have to criticize somebody, if a letter is to be written criticizing somebody's action, that such a letter should not be posted in a hurry. It should be kept for some time and reflected over and should be posted only and only if it is necessary. This can be contrasted with today's situation in many places. If something goes wrong, immediately the question arises as to who did it first. And immediately somebody's name is identified and that is what is called accountability. And as soon as a person is made accountable, the news comes out, so and so committed the mistake and thereafter all type of enquiries and other things follow. So if you follow the maxim of Abraham Lincoln, I'm sure Abraham Lincoln would not have announced the name of the person. Probably he would have said, let us wait and watch before we go public about it. So we can go deeper and deeper. Second is Sam Maneksha. He was our, he was our uh, field ma marshal. About Sam Maneksha it has been said, if any paper goes to him recommending penalizing for some soldiers for the action done on the war front, it seems he used to keep that particular file for long, study it, reflect it, generally return it, not accepting the recommendation. So Maneksha said once that it is easy for us to comment about somebody's action sitting in the headquarters, but it will be very, very difficult to visualize how a man functions at the time of the war. Can we visualize ourselves in the battlefield when we take a decision about somebody? So friends, this subject called HRM, Human Resource Management, should not be merely confined to, con to treating people as a mere resource. To call even human being a resource itself is somewhat demeaning the human being. But whatever may be the reason, over the period it has been mentioned, human being as a resource. If you consider something as a resource, you may treat it very casually. Now look at these particular machines, look at these computers, look at any of these things, your car, your vehicle, or whatever it is. These are all resources. How you treat it? If you don't like the computer, you will throw it out. You will purchase another one. You will replace it. <coughs> if you don't like this particular, you know, say even house, you abandon that house. So that is all resources. But can you do that with the human beings? If you adopt that particular, you know, hiring and firing, as is current in some of the Western world, and currently coming to India also, can we, can we have a society of joy and happiness? If you really care for welfare of others, joy of others, we will have to rethink on the subject called resources. Human being cannot be merely treated as a resource. And it is not, and definitely, important point called human resource management. How do you manage it? This is not managing your computers and, you know, you know uh, non-living resources. This is managing the live resources. And how do you do that is the challenge before everybody, including the banking industry. Other, other examples, I'm not going deeper. You must make an endeavor to study about what they have done and what contributions they made to their respective sector. Now let's see the overall coverage in this particular module. The first thing is fundamentals of HRM. The fundamental, the basics, the foundations of HRM. Second one is development of human resources. 
how these resources can be developed. That is the second point. Then human implications of organizations, employees feedback and reward system, performance management, and HRM and information technology. So six modules covering almost 25 marks and 25 marks which can be easily obtained if you try to understand the practice of human relations rather than the theory of it. Though theory is important, the practice assumes more. Now is human resource management a new subject? Absolutely no. Just some time back I mentioned about what role Abraham Lincoln played. That was in the 1770s or something like that, early part of 1800. Now circa 1800, around 1800, one Mr. Owen had stated that a manager's best investment was in his workers. Is the subject of HRM new? Not at all. As mentioned earlier, Abraham Lincoln practiced it in the later part of 1800, 18th century. Now, in or around 1800, Mr. Owen had stated that the manager's best investment was in his workers. Vital missions, as he called them. That means even at that particular period of time, that is almost 200 years back, man was compared only with a mission, vital mission, whatever that may be. But he believed in giving them better conditions of work that will add to their productivity. So if in 1800, this particular subject had assumed importance, how come thereafter the subject did not receive the importance it deserved. In the whole of 19th century and the full part of the 20th century, we know that human beings were now treated with respect in most of the organization. Even today, as latest now in 2013, in any forum on, or seminar on HRM, they are talking as to how to treat the people. So whatever lessons which we have learned in the last 200 years, I think we could not put to good use. There are exceptions. There may be some good companies about which we will come. So again to re-emphasize this particular point, that even for the last 200 years it has been mentioned this resource should be treated with, with respect. The, the, the last word has not been said. So, so, so friends, it is necessary that we understand with whomsoever we are dealing that the, the desire, their desires, we must be able to meet. Now let us go back to again somewhere in the mid, middle of the 18th century there. Frederick Taylor, who was one of the pioneers on you know, human resource management said, importance, importance was given to the work and getting it completed. Down the centuries, after all, people were goal-oriented. Even today, many of the people have got grandiose goals and they want it to be completed. In many of the organizations today, 12 to 14 hours work has become a normal routine. Even in bank today, there is nothing like 10 to 5 op operations. People have been given tasks and it should be completed. How they complete, when they complete, is left to them. But it must be completed. This can be compared with probably the building of pyramids. I had the occasion to visit Egypt and uh, see the pyramids. Now pyramid is a marvelous creation of human being. Beautiful sight, beautiful thing to see. But can we visualize the pain and the sufferings undergone by the people who built the pyramid? By looking at the photo of the pyramid, we will not be able to visualize the task which went behind it. So I am sure some king of that particular point of time must have said, I want a pyramid to be built, whatever may be the consequences, I do not care. So if the history of pyramid is studied, you will see the suffering which is undergone. 
How many pyramids are being built today? Every organization want to build a pyramid of their own. But in that particular process, now it is being realized, if the important aspect of human beings are neglected, then even the companies may have to pay a heavy price. It is in that background these points come about. In the 1800 it was been said, importance was given to the work and getting it completed. Task can be broken down into simple units for people to understand and perform. People will do a given activity <coughs> in return for money. Something, it went, some, some, something went into the minds of the employers, kings, whomsoever you name it, that by giving money, you can make the people work. Human resources can be ma made to work as you want. So that is what they thought in that particular period. People have to do what is defined by the organization in turn by technology. At that time, the word technology may not have been used. I am talking about 1850s. But people have to do what is defined by the organization. By and large, even today, these points continues to remain. Whatever may be the advancement we have made in, in the field of HRM. Somewhere in 1924, you know, fast forward around 75 years, Elton Mayo said, focused on various dimensions of human behavior at work. You know, because of the evolvement of the era and period, whatever must have happened, it was felt that the focus must be shifted to human behavior. Human relations movement then replaced the rational economic man by the social man perspective. It started believing the man does not stay, uh, live only by bread alone. He also needs other social and other life concern. Individuals are motivated to work by other than monetary factors. Increasingly, it has been felt, felt now that the people are not merely chasing money. This is the starkly known in areas like IT and other areas. Where people are given very good salary, people are given you know, very good working conditions, but they are not able to enjoy that particular time because they are confined to their office for such a long period of time. Or either they are made to travel away from their house. So the IT industry has brought to the focus that individuals are motivated to work by factors other than money. So this brought a change even in the banking sector. So, two distinct approaches to a charm can be seen from the above. One is the based on economic and accounting, emphasize a hard-headed, profit-minded approach to use of human resources. Over the years, either it is winning the war, or it's building a pyramid, or it's building a dam, you name whatever it is. It is always, you know, achieving something, achieving certain goals. That is one side and the other side and the most important thing that is what is now driving driving the hrm today based on social work and social psychology for what is called social welfare viewpoint so from merely achieving goal it has become to social welfare achieving the welfare of the people concerned in another way we can look at this development of hrm in broadly three phases. Phase number one, which has happened some 200 years back, little focus on people and stress on output, but that is the Industrial Revolution era. Nobody wants to remember the Industrial Revolution era because their people were treated worse than machines. Then comes phase two, focus shifted to personal function with both positive and coercive measures. That is the characteristic policy was adopted some benefits were given. If it is not met with, immediately coercive measures. The punishment is continued. The phase is still on in many organizations, even currently. Then phase two gave importance to acquisition of people, how to acquire people. That has been achieved importance. Integrated them to the workforce. Training and placement. In the, in the early part of this particular century, the training started developing, uh, gaining importance. Train the people because the work became more and more sophisticated. Then came promotions. 
it has been felt that periodical timely merit based promotions are necessary to ensure that people contribute for the growth of the organization then of course compensation compensation has become a big issue all over the world you know workmen started fighting for their right there were strikes and strikes and strikes in all type of in institutions and lastly evaluation that whether they are meeting the goals set by the organizations so this phase 2 gave importance to the hrm from a different angle 